Welcome to Network Nuts YouTube channel. I am Alok Srivastava. In this video, I am going to show you how you can configure a multi-factor authentication or a TFA, two-factor authentication along with your SSH. We are aware that SSH normally has two options. Either I can do a password-based authentication or a key-based authentication. But then we have the third one option also for the MFA, multi-factor authentication or a two-factor authentication. The idea is very simple. Whenever I try to hit a machine on SSH, my device is already connected with that particular server and I will be receiving a OTP kind of a stuff onto my machine on the application like Google Authenticator. So once to establish uh, the connection to the remote server, I have to submit the password as well as the OTP which is coming on onto my machine, a six digit number which is being refreshed after every I think uh, 30 seconds or 5 seconds and I have to submit that number. So let's see how we can do it. So this is my machine here. So these are the two machines which we are running. This is having a IP address of uh, 100, 110.0.0.100 and I have got another other machine also IP address show. This is having the IP of uh, 1, right? This is 1 and this is 100. So let's consider node one as the client. So I'll first check the connectivity. I should be able to hit the server. Yes, I'm able to hit, right? So how can I configure that? Very easy stuff. I had written down these stuffs. Uh, very basic stuff is that number one, you have to install the Google Authenticator application on the server, right? Number one. Second, I had to configure my PAM to use the, the Google Authenticator. And third, I have to tell the SSH to use the uh, Google Authenticator for the challenge password kind of a thing, right? So very easy steps. I will write down the steps in the description of this video. So you can take it from there. So currently this is the machine and I have the steps here. It's very easy. The first thing is that, okay, you should not be doing this with a root. You should normally be logging with a user by which on which you wanted to have the multi-factor authentication configured, right? So this is the alloc user. The first thing I had to do, I had to install the Google Authenticator application. Very easy. Just paste it here, right? Install the lib, lib pam Google Authenticator application on this machine. Supply your password because you have to. And oh, wrong password. Let me try it again. And really, yeah, now it's working. So I might be giving, so just install the package here. So once the package is installed, first thing I, ha I have to do is I have to tell the PAM to use this application, right? A very single line, a very simple, a straightforward, a straightforward single line, which you have to add into the your PAM.d SSHD file. So just wait for a while. I'll be showing you all this. Very interesting thing. Uh, to secure your server so it is installed the package is installed i can confirm it again it is already installed perfect what next i have to tell i told you now i need to generate my uh, the qr code right my device need to be attached to the server so make sure you have your phone with you and you should have installed the Google Authenticator application onto your phone. It doesn't matter whether you are using an Android or an iPhone, right? So the second thing I had to do, I had to run this Google Authenticator and make sure you have logged in with the same user on which you wanted to have the multi-factor authentication configured, right? I press here, right here, press enter. Do you authenticate, uh, like uh, generate the token on the time base? Yes, obviously the answers are going to be yes. This is it. I need to scan this. So I can make it slightly smaller. It's not filling. So wait for a minute. There is a terminal on Zoom. Yeah, one more time, I guess it will work. That's it. This is it, right? So I have to scan this. So what I have to do, I had to open my phone, right? I have to open the Google Authenticator application. Here it is, right? And scan it, right? add scan the qr code there will be option coming up here scan the qr code and scan it that's it right so i will be getting my machine added here the last one perfect this is done so by this step 
my machine my phone is connected with this particular application right so i save it that's all that but you need to have your phone ready then obviously i need to enter code so this is the secret code your secret key and enter the code from the app so i have to open the file sorry my app again and the code so the number which i am getting currently you are, they keep on changing right after every 30 seconds so currently it is uh, 431059 yours will be different right enter that's it it is confirmed it is good to save these numbers somewhere right i'm not doing it so it is going to update the files just press yes here right it will help you in uh, preventing the man in the middle at attack makes sense perfect obviously i wanted to confirm yes enable the rate limit yes that's it job done now what so i had done this i'll make it uh, slightly bigger once again terminal zoom and terminal zoom right it will be much more easier on the eyes so once this is done the next thing i had to do i had to write this line auth required and the google authenticator right pam i had to configure the pam to use the google authenticator and i have to write it in etsy pam.dssh it but it is always a good practice to take the backup first right so i take the backup of the file first obviously i have to use the sudo that's it so i will be getting a file here uh, sudo uh, sorry etsy pam.d right and ssh see and sshd copy right so i have this file here ssh and the file name wait a minute i should be doing a ll here yeah right and do a double tab i i can see this is the backup file leave it here just wanted to confirm that yeah the file is created what next copy this line and put it in your pam.d either you can copy it or echo it so i'll copy it right open your file main file sudo obviously i have to do a sudo uh, vim at c ss.pam.d and sshd right open this file and add anywhere say pam here this i put it here at the top that's it save and come out right what next so you had configured the pam to use that module google authenticator but then i have to tell the ssh also right that ssh you should also use that so the next thing i have to do i have to write this challenge authentication yes in your main ssh file right sshd underscore conf you know it sudo vim at c ssh and sshd underscore config right put it anywhere check it out might be it is already already there challenge chall no it is not there right i don't find anything with the challenge so put it anywhere so i put it here anywhere 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 i put it here i put a comment here like here in the authentication i paste it challenge response authentication yes this is all you have to do save and come out now because and obvious we have changed the configuration file i need to restart the sshd right i need to restart the sshd i restarted it Chopped. now what i have to do ssh onto this machine right so i go to the second machine this one is the manager right now i go to the second machine I'm able to ping the manager. Wonderful. Now see, you will see a difference here. If I do SSH alloc at 10.0.0.100, right? That is the IP address of the manager. If I hit here, obviously this will be added. See, verification code. Wow. This is new. So I have to open my phone and write that number, right? Unless you write that number, that means you are not the valid user right the password might have been compromised so you will be asked to enter this number and this number get uh, regenerated after every 30 seconds so you should have the phone with you and the number which comes say in my case it is 007 wow james bond 007 859 you press here then you will be prompted for the password right r e d h a t red hat is the password so once you are done now you will be allowed to do ssh onto the manager that's it a very interesting thing a very small hack which makes your sss server more secure which make your production servers more secure 
and you can be assured that the server even if the password is compromised or the key got compromised it will be accessed only by the machines from the persons who are valid authentic user and carry the device i hope you have understood it and thank you for watching do subscribe us and if you want to do learn more we offer trainings a more very good detailed trainings on red hat linux so you can join us for the rscsa and rsc training and you can learn a lot thank you very much i'll see you again take care god bless and as usual jai hind